cord to the cloud. Okay, and we're live. Welcome to another OpenRC meeting. Um, we are looking to, the agenda should be posted in the, uh, the meeting notes doc that I've shared. Uh, again, please add yourself, uh, Daniel, if you can. Great. Um, so again, some housekeeping uh, introductions. I think most people know who we all are on the call so far. Um, but uh, again, going over sort of the intentions and desired outcomes here, uh, this is an opportunity, this meeting is an opportunity for us to be interacting with community, but also uh, having discussions out in the open um, so that we can collaborate more closely with the community and uh, ideally push forward um, any sort of RFCs or work um, that uh, we deem uh, you know, necessary to continue to support that community uh, by NPM. Um, so uh, ideally, if you want something to be, uh, you know, proposed or talked uh, about in this discussion, then we'll be uh, labeling issues and PRs in the future uh, with the label agenda. Um, so that will uh, bubble things up so that we know exactly what we want to be discussing in these calls. Um, the uh, first uh, thing on the docket or on the agenda today is actually um, something that continues to sort of spread up, uh, which is sort of the funding package maintainers, the support drafts um, that the package maintenance working group have put together. Um, and essentially this item I think is specifically tailored towards, you know, the go forward strategy for NPM and what we can do sort of as a first step um, compared to uh, the longer uh, tail uh, ideal um, solution uh, that we can hopefully get to uh, over time. Um, so uh, linked is actually a uh, rough draft spec of what that solution looks like. Um, it's been modified um, from uh, the original schema that the package maintenance working group put together um, some of the ideas were pulled from that in terms of having a monetary field or a field identifying monetary uh, means for package maintainers uh, to um, be sponsored by or supported by the community. Um, and we've actually uh, narrowed in on, on the terminology or the nomenclature there um, to actually uh, focus on funding. Um, and so that's, you know, the proposal here is uh, we will implement and support a funding field in pack, the package JSON itself, um, and that we will create um, uh, sort of some features and functionality around um, that that field and and what's the values in it um, on the website as well as in the CLI. Um, this is uh, you know a proposal that sh will get I think. Um, uh, formatted into the proper sort of RC um, format um, before we'll ratify it. Uh, but right now we've backlogged uh, essentially this this work um, and are looking to to move forward with supporting this. I know that uh, Roy is, is probably going to be the championing this work. Um, and the idea here, uh, Daniel, I know specifically uh, I've, I've been talking with you about this. Um, the the, the idea here is that we would implement something very similar to what uh, Kyle had proposed uh, with sustainability and support, um, but instead uh, it would actually look to um, have a prompt after post installed to outline how many packages have actually listed uh, funding or have actually uh, declared that they have some either they're looking for funding or they have means of funding in some way um, and then we could essentially hide that that prompt or that uh, um, you know that output uh, if need be um, with the no fund flag um, and then running npm fund would essentially bubble up the information very similar to the way that that uh, uh, that PR looks like for support at the moment. Um, so uh, I've updated uh, that that sort of draft uh, spec, which is linked. Uh, so you can take it, if you want to, you can uh, uh, take a look at that. Um, I'm not sure if you had any kind of 
initial feedback with those changes um, because I know that's changed from the last time we we talked about um, sort of backing. I think the term was originally backing. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Um, is the no found uh, no found flag a one time opt out? Uh, so no, it would be essentially every time you run npm install, you would have to provide that flag. Okay. I, in terms of how I understood the discussion going yesterday, um, that would be uh, a flag you have to provide each time if you want to opt out of the, um, you know, that prompt. Mm. So that that's there's some good discussion there in terms of once this is put into uh, like the a PR with properly drafted, we can maybe have some of those discussions if the implementation. And I, I'm going to guess there's going to be some folks that are are going to have some questions about that, like how that works. Um, again, I think the intent here is to have a signal, a signal to the community uh, that there is this new information um, that the a package maintainer is providing. Um, and then they are, you know, they will be um, suggested to run the npm fun command uh, to learn more about that information, right? So to discover more about that. Um, this was a really good, I think, lays the foundation for uh, further, you know, uh, optimized workflows for, for being the middleman or, or to helping uh, or middle person to helping people, um, you know, get get a monetary sort of donation or support from from the community, right? So uh, again, this could be and probably will land in the next uh, minor version, um, six thirteen. That's the intent so far. Um, so the work would be hopefully done over the next uh, two three weeks. Um, to support this, uh, you know, initiative. There's um. Go ahead, so, Mike. Sorry, Daniel. I was gonna say. So there, if we can, basically, we want this in six thirteen, which would be two weeks from now. I think we're target, or is it three weeks from now? So is there? There's meetings with all these other committees to like sort of get the RFC pushed. And, like, is there enough time in that um, window to sort of go through all the process that needs to happen for? Because it seems like the RFC at the moment is quite raw because uh, we haven't actually proposed the rewrite yet, right? Yeah, so we haven't brought it to the package maintenance working group, um, although that hasn't always been, I don't, I don't know if that's been well-defined, how, how RFCs are going to be shared across these, essentially these groups. Um, I think we do want to uh, flag and identify that this work is getting done uh, although we've been sending signals to those to those working groups and been uh, discussing with them for quite a while um, i think that this is something over the next 48 hours will be put on their radar um, and again it's sort of a streamlined version uh, of proposals and and a spec that i think has gotten some level of um, of uh, approval from some of those folks. Um, again, I, I think the way that the draft, it, it, the, it, the spec is drafted or this RFC is drafted is in a way that uh, allows it to be pretty flexible um, and ideally is, you know, allows for change over time, especially because, you know, it's, it's so limited in scope. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, essentially what will happen here is uh, I, I will format this uh, into like a proper RFC format for, for us, um, submit it as a PR, uh, and then go back to the package maintenance working group um, to say that this is the intent to, to ship uh, functionality around this. Um, that, I think, a three-week window uh, is, is, should, be, should be good enough. Um, uh, to to have those discussions, I think. Um, so the ideal is, yeah, that within two to three weeks, that that will will land at least uh, one or two meetings with with that working group to to ensure that we're aligned. Awesome. It's good to note, though. That's good. 
this could easily be a feature improvement, but I wonder if you could even add something to the NPMRC file if you've actively funded projects and been like, I've done my part and I don't want to see this message anymore. Um, that way it's more persistent than just using the flag. Yeah, so that, Daniel, that's exactly where our thoughts were going yesterday. Um, and Isaac, who is on the call, was also having similar thoughts in, in terms of the phase two of, of this type of spec. Um, again, the, the focus here for us was to um, try to drill into and narrow in on the most important aspects of, of the work that was being done in package maintenance. And, and so that was specifically the monetarily viable option of support versus the sort of SLA standards. We, we want to um, focus on this because we felt it was the most uh, uh, meaningful work. Um, and we also felt, and I, I feel personally, uh, subjectively, that the, this is the this is the right approach for, for these fields. Um, whereas, you know, in the future, potentially we could have um, modified, a modified document that has similar information uh, going forward. But this is a for good first step to put it into package.json um, and, and provide some means of tooling to, to actually make it useful information. Um, so in terms of that, so there are a couple of takeaways again, for me, uh, the takeaway is to, to formalize, um, this document, um, in the way that we ask other people to, to create RFCs, um, and I'll make a PR against, uh, uh, the NPM RFCs, uh, repo, uh, and then I'll be bringing this up in as a agenda item or an issue with the package maintenance working group and everybody should feel free to, to join that call. Um, they have, uh, I think weekly calls that are, are bi-weekly calls that um, change in time uh, so that more folks can attend. Um, so there's one that's early in the morning and one that's uh, later in the afternoon, so. Cool. Any other like, things to add on that specifically. This is probably the biggest um, biggest item that's been talked about for, for the last couple of months. It's exciting <laughs> to think, it's exciting to think that, you know, we're, we're gonna land something that hopefully um, really helps the community, right? Um, yeah. Cool, uh, moving on. So, uh, essentially exposing uh, our risk metadata. Some of these, uh, you know, I think require uh, Isaac's input because he's been primarily uh, the person developing on our breast for now. I'm not sure if anybody else has any insight into this R RFC. Uh, I don't, but I can quickly read and see if I can. Sure. So another good like takeaway from this then is uh, because we don't have uh, like Vincent, who's the the author of the pull request, um, we should probably identify um, that that we should be uh, asking these folks to join if they can, um, and and commenting in their in the thread so things don't don't get uh, slowed down. So I believe the RFC is about exposing uh, metadata as environment variables during uh, essentially any of the uh, yeah lifecycle scripts. So post install, pre build install. 
which is a pretty interesting concept, although I'm not sure if there's any issues with how that would get implemented. It sounds like a, a good idea. I think we just yeah. uh, we need to flush out maybe some of the details of how to actually support that. Um, Cause you would be mounting a whole bunch of that, I guess, metadata um, into the environment. I'm not sure if there's any security concerns with that, if there's any kind of, you know, performance concerns, so. I don't know if I saw the environment variable part. There's like a dot arborist metadata dot JSON file that is, I'm assuming being written to as arborist is doing things. Yep. And so in the detailed expl explanation of the arborist C, it specifically is asking for um, that metadata from arborist um, to be mounted as environment variables so they can access it, right? So in their install scopes or the lifecycle scripts. It's an interesting concept. I, th I think it probably, is it flagged already or labeled appropriately? It is not. So we will add, uh, needs discussion and this goes back to my yeah. job to be done i'm not sure what the like there's two rfcs here right like the 51 is the like expose arborist metadata to lifecycle scripts and then the 39 is don't add metadata to package or json so like he, i'm assuming isaac is moving removing it and then also he created one to or i guess uh Weaver rather created one to, or Vincent created one to add it to the life cycle scripts, I suppose. So 39, you're talking about uh, package overrides? Uh, no, no, 38, sorry, 38, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so 38 is the like, don't, is the one that Isaac created because I'm assuming he's removing stuff because Arborist is breaking things uh, meaningfully. Uh, then, yeah, it, that's not adding the metadata to package JSON specifically, um, right? So don't mutate package JSON, which is makes sense. Um, versus uh, what I think the ask here is bubble up the metadata information um, that gets generated uh, when you're building the tree. So Arborist is gonna have that that metadata is gonna live in a brand new file called Arborist metadata. JSON, where it previously would have lived in package JSON, because um, we mutated package JSON. And so now the idea here in this in Vince's RFC is to um, then pass that to any lifecycle script. Um, so you can do interesting things, I'm sure, um, with it. Uh, so it's a it's an interesting idea. It might be something that we could um, consider for, for MPM seven. Yeah. Or like some version thereof. Um, mm -hmm. I, I recommend punting this to the next meeting because, yep. uh, Vincent's not here and neither is Isaac. And I think they're the two with the most context. Totally. So I've added labels for under discussion in some or major, and I'll probably change those, uh, going forward, uh, as we roll out, um, all the Do you want to add them on 38 as well? Oh, I guess we're not talking about 38. That's just where the discussion lives. Yeah, we're just talking about 51 for now. We can, uh, I can go back and look at 38 actually. Um, I think like all their conversation lives there, which is a bit strange. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, moving on, NPM cache list. And again, if we don't have the right people, because Jacob is not on, then, and Isaac, I believe. It looks like he's uh, interested in this. That sounds like a great feature to learn soon. 
Yeah, I agree. Knowing what's in the like mysterious Pacoche cache would be pretty, or I mean, Kakash rather, but which is what Pacoche uses would be kind of fantastic. Because I think I, the only the only command that we expose is like npm cache clear or clean rather, and that has like a dash dash force like flag that'll only let you do it, and then we say some weird message about hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's right. like I, I would really love to know what's in that cache. Yeah, exactly. It's very nebulous. It's sort of like a black box where you don't we don't expect you to know what's going on inside of it. So um this would be definitely interesting to land in a minor version. Yeah, it's just a command. Update. Do we want to put this in a to do column or like a, a create an issue for this even to begin with? And then we can talk about implementation. I mean, it seems like the pull request is he's like already implemented, but uh, I think that's an idea of how he sh should be using strings rather than whatever he happens to be using. Yeah. So let's 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 to queue this up as well. Um, if I can make a release. Uh, so I'm going to add the flag or the label release for now. Um, and circle, we can circle back on this on if we think that this is doable to land for or get into the state that we can land it for 613. Yeah, That's cool. for, yeah unfortunately, it has no tests right now. <laughs> exactly. so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look like we can land right away. That's so we can at least like oh, yeah, go that. back and ask uh, for tests. So is there needs tests label? There we go. So it's labeled appropriately. If we can get um, Jacob to write some tests for it and we're okay with the implementation, we might be able to land it. So cool. Uh, moving on. Number 43, peer dependencies installation. Um, peer dependencies. <laughs> I love it. Uh, because Isaac's not here, I think I'm going to punt this, but I'm going to add the label that it's... This should be NPM 7, right? There's no way this gets accomplished before Arborist lands. Sember major for sure, yeah. And we're going to say... I don't think Arborist is changing the way that we nest uh, uh, node modules, but I think he's doing a better job <laughs> at managing the ideal tree so of depths, so it should make it easier for stuff like this to happen, I think. There's also something about like optional dependencies or something like that as well. For sure. Uh, okay, uh, moving on to uh, CLI pull request number 134. Um, so essentially scoped names beginning with a dot or underscore. So that's that's just the docs change, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think this is just essentially uh, outlining. Try to understand about scoped aren't scoped names starting with an accent? It's it's just the wording. Yeah, I feel like we can land this. Uh, I can take care of that <laughs> now that I'm working on the <laughs> docs website. Okay, I'm going to assign Claudia. And we're going to add in uh, release label. And it looks good. It'd be nice to land on, yeah, for sure. That's, I think, why I put it on the agenda, because I knew that this was something simple. Um, so cool. Uh, moving on, so 48. Now, this uh, has been open for a while. And I know that there's work done associated with it. Um, I've even interfaced with Lachlan a little bit who wrote the implementation. Um, again, it just sounded like Isaac was the only one with like some currents and concerns and not the only one, but maybe there's concerns about um, when exactly uh, the execution of these scripts would happen. So I think the R RFC outlines 
uh, linking any hooks that are found in like the hooks folder, very similar to the way we like wire up um, a bin, like scripts that are found in bin. Um, and these would be anything in that folder would be uh, related to lifecycle hooks. So pre-install, post-install. Is there um, an implementation somewhere? Yes. So there's a open pull request against the CLI um, with this work, with a work to support this as well. Is that link somewhere? Uh, I can find the link for you. Uh, actually, it's in, not in the CLI repo. It is in, I believe it is in, hmm. I think it's actually against a dependency. Can't. Realize. Oh yeah, I see it here. Uh, it's uh, bin dash links for request number five. It's in the uh, my right. file of the RFC. Yes. Uh, just share that so everybody can find it. And we can update this. Ray, are you still taking notes? Oh, locally? Async? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Locally. Okay. I'll copy paste them. Don't worry. OK. I was getting a bit concerned there. Um, yeah, so there is work that's associated with this RFC. Um, and I know that he's uh, um, spoken spoken out uh, about it, hoping that we could land it as it's been open for a few months. And, you know, he did the work to, to, to wire everything up. Um, I mean, it seems straightforward to me, but that might be a naive understanding of, of the work. Um, so I, I think, again, we're going to have to, to punt it to the next call or, or later on um, based on the fact that, you know, Isaac was the only person here that seemed to have uh, issues with the work. So I'm going to add labels. So this would be a Sunver minor. minor actually no this would be a major i believe yeah this would require a major yeah because it's not backwards compatible yeah that's right that's right so this is blocked by npm 7 so that's that's um okay that gives me a little bit of a relief then uh, just because i was yeah okay and under discussion, yes, under discussion and summary measure. Okay, so I've labeled it now. Um, we'll circle back on this uh, as we talk more about NPM 7 uh, work then. Okay. Going forward, uh, the last three are more about um, this call specifically. Um, the, there's going to be a collaboration summit um, that's being held by the OpenJS Foundation um, at the Node Interactive Montreal Conference um, that's happening in December. 
uh, Roy came up with the idea that we should propose having uh, this this call essentially happen uh, in in real life in person with um, a number of the folks that are on the working groups in in the Node Foundation that are should be um, there um, and having the opportunity to talk with people face to face uh, about. Um, uh, package maintenance modules, um, and essentially the work that we're doing here at NPM um, would be pretty opportunistic and we should take advantage of that. Um, and so I think the action item here is to propose having um, that meeting and booking out time at the collaboration summit um, uh, to have us, us essentially be uh, discussing uh, the future state of and the work being done by MPM um, with those folks and invite people to to come talk with us. Um, I know that I, I'm going to, and I am working to try to um, carve out uh, budget and time for, for us to, to get over there. Um, and so it's not 100% confirmed right now, but for sure Roy will be at, at the conference, but um, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that uh, we have the opportunity to 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 get up there as the uh, community and open source team. So um, I'm looking to to make my way up there. Um, I believe the conference is December 9th to the 14th. I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Interactive. The, the collaboration summit itself? Uh, the Node.js Interactive summit. Yeah, it's the 11th. So the, the Node.js, their conference is uh, the 11th and 12th. And then the collab summit is the 13th and 14th. 13th and so 14th, it's okay. Two days after, yeah. Okay. So, so there is the conference and then there is the collaboration summit, yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the idea, uh, idea there would be um, we tried to book one of the rooms and try to book um, time and, and ideally get uh, people some support for um, you know the work that we're doing and, and it will be a good opportunity to, to, to collaborate in person. So takeaway here is just make that proposal happen. Um, there's an open um, uh, issue thread for I think proposals for the summit. Um, so yeah, uh, I can take that away unless somebody else wants to champion that. Roy? <laughs> I can do it. Uh, I mean, you're already part of the, I, I mean, I can do it and then you jump in and you'll back with my the proposal then. That could be nice, yeah. Yeah. So. I think that you're the one participating in the package maintenance because I think that's kind of the working group that goes the best along with the proposal itself. Yeah, we like those people. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so moving on from that, uh, discussing new time and day for this meeting. I know that uh, Jordan uh, um, Harbend uh, uh, wanted to join. I know that Wes um, has joined in the past. These are folks that are active in uh, the the various Node Foundation working groups. DC39, you know, um, they're active in the OpenJS Foundation working groups um, and all those meetings. Um, and so trying to, I think, make a uh, meeting time and day that more folks can attend would be, would be good. Um, or to switch the cadence. Um, so uh, potentially doing it earlier or later uh, and varying when when it happens, so we we cover more bases um, would be good. So I'm not sure if anybody has any ideas on you know how we can um, either have more of these or these calls or um, changing the time or day of them to to try support more folks um, with the with the mindset that you know we are spread out over the planet and time zones. Time is hard. I think it would be nice to, to try different, different times for uh, every new uh, meeting. Because it's as, as, there's a lot of people that might want to join and it's impossible to coordinate with everyone. 
for sure. Um, do we have any suggestion for the next meeting? We've been keeping it bi-weekly cadence. So um, the next uh, call would be on uh, October 30th, Wednesday, October 30th. Um, currently it's scheduled for again, 1 p.m. Eastern week. Uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, do we want to change the day and or uh, the time there? I suggest, um, so this is like an idea I took from a volleyball league <laughs> that was that's around here. Uh, they have three time slots and uh, your team basically rotates through each of the time slots every week. So every, every time you do the thing, it's a different time, but there are only three of them. And so you can sort of like, know what time is supposed to be at it it's not like so confusing as like oh god what because that's the problem it's like oh what time is it this week i have no idea but if you have the three of them so there can be like an early one uh to get people on either like the east coast and then sort of the trailing time zone from the other side of the world and then there's could be one in the middle of the day like this one and then there could be one a little bit later to sort of get the three uh because if it if it's a little bit later then you get the west coasters or like utc minus seven or something and then UTC minus four and then you can get like UTC right and then there's probably a few people that are like UTC plus three or something like that so so a good idea would be having three time slots in that day maybe and then making sure we have somebody to facilitate each meeting if we get attendance um, then there's opportunity for discussion or you say you know yeah, I think that I think rotating through days will be more challenging because then you're going to keep the same time but different days and that like the, the day might be correct but the time I think that like we're working with time zones not necessarily days at the moment right so I think that uh, catering to that first and then if we notice that there's not a change at all then perhaps uh, a different day would um, suffice but if we're doing it by weekly cadence it would be really easy to like after two months say like you know this is not working let's do a different day it would be easy to change then because then that would have been four four meetings, right? Yeah. Okay. So. But uh, another point that we can take into consideration is like uh, trying to follow up with people that have proposed on, uh, uh, on the RFCs, uh, people from the community, and try to follow up with them and then maybe use the idea of having multiple choices and see like what choice is more popular from among the group of people that have current uh, RFC open that would be interested in attending. Yeah, I think maybe instead of going ahead and arbitrarily booking a time, we should make an issue in the uh, uh, in the RFC um, repo and post a poll. I know that you can do that with. Um, I think there's a Probot implementation that you can have to run polls inside of GitHub issues. Um, and then we can suggest a number of times and then see which one comes out. Did that make sense? That sounds good, yeah. Okay. Um, who wants to we, do that? We, we should also let, um, let people know that their PRs or their RFC has been, are going to be discussed on the, on the meeting. Yeah. Because I feel like we are choosing the agenda a few, a few days in advance or hours. And uh, then people don't know if they... Uh, if there is something uh, that is interesting for them to, to, to check or not during yeah, the meeting. For sure. Yeah. So I think going forward, the uh, idea would be that if you want to uh, have something brought up uh, in this meeting, then it should have your issue or your PR should have the label agenda. And what we'll do is we'll source the agenda going forward. Um, by essentially just querying for the issues and PRs with that label. Um, and that will be how this go, you know, this happens going forward, um, versus having it um, arbitrarily defined uh, as it has been uh, to date. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there will be a means for you to actively, uh, you know, want to get your um, issue or PR put on this uh, in this discussion. Uh, so discuss new day time. Uh, does somebody want to own the action of setting up that poll? I can do it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And if you need help, I, I think I have a couple of resources on how we can set up uh, polls 
in issues, um, which is kind of neat that we can actually do that. Um, okay. Uh, the last note uh, with about 15 minutes left is announcements. So very similar to, to what Claudio was mentioning, um, getting uh, this call and, and the items on this call on people's radar sooner. Um, how can we do that? Whether that's uh, tweeting about it or, or being um, better at creating uh, an agenda earlier on, um, pinning that agenda, you know, uh, potentially you know, promoting it um, in, in various places. So far, it's been very manual. The first three meetings have been uh, all just run uh, from whatever spare time I have. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if anybody has any ideas or, or what they think is uh, the right means of promoting this call so that it's successful and it's meaningful. Um, uh more of a question i do have we tried reaching out directly to the people that send rfcs to make sure they try to attend not yet okay yeah because i feel that that could be a very effective one because those are the people that should be interested in the, in the call right right they, yeah, so they have open Go ahead, there's probably Tom. a way of automating that uh, right. like if we if we had like a standard uh, like agenda block we kind of do now but if uh, if it had the links to the RFCs or something there's probably some probot thing that could just like scrape through it and then like ping all the people and let them know that they were discussing their thing in the next meeting when we we, we would just have to be a bit more um, proactive about what's going to be on the next agenda I mean that could be the like trailing item in each meeting is like well what do we think we should talk about next week to get a rough draft kind of thing and then we can perhaps yeah, so again, it's been mostly manual to, to date. And if we could get automation set up, I know that uh, the Node Foundation and OpenJS Foundation both use um, some legacy automated um, agenda creation. And, and um, uh, I went digging in it to see if I could um, uh, modify it to ensure that new issues that were created with the agenda got pinned. and. Um, it's pretty old code, so I wouldn't suggest that we use it. Um, is there a link to it? Is there uh, maybe something I can poke around? I, I can find. Time? I can find you the uh, yeah the node. Uh, I'm sure we might be able to like dog food that a little internally, and then use it for this, perhaps. Uh, considering that I have work slated internally for stuff like this. Yeah, um, so, I, go ahead. I, I, I didn't want to cut you. I have another idea, um, but finish uh, before. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, pulling up the work here. The project um, called Create Node Meeting Artifacts, and I'll paste it in chat and also into the doc here for you. I, I was just thinking that we, if we actually get um, the confirmation of certain people of the community to assist these uh, meetings, we can promote that as well on Twitter. Like, imagine if we can send a tweet saying like, this person from Microsoft or, or from whatever, Wes is joining, Isaac is gonna be there, join us to talk about the news, uh, I don't know, font support, uh, NPM command, uh, and then link to the meeting or whatever. I think uh, we, there is a lot of things we can do to, to, have, uh, to market better um, the meeting and, and get more people to join. For sure. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't expect to, us to start off with like 50 people showing up to the call yet. But um, I think, yeah, over time that it ideally becomes more and more useful for, for folks. Um, and yeah, I, I think promotion um, through, uh, you know, the, the people that are collaborating through their networks would be a good way of, uh, of ideally getting fresh ideas, fresh people in here. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I like that. Um, again, going back to maybe, uh, you know, Wes or, or the people, or Tierney or the other mm -hmm. people that have joined us uh, previously and asking them, you know, uh, if they'd be okay with like retweeting or yeah. promoting when they're gonna join the call, that'd be, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, to ask for that kind of, uh, um, yeah, support, I guess. 
were you thinking also like of automating that in some way, Claudia? No, I was uh, thinking mostly of reaching out directly to them and asking uh, for a retweet and to their uh, follower base. For sure. And I think if we do, uh, we were lucky here, the marketing folks were able to do a tweet about an hour before the call, um, which was nice. But um, if, you know, it's a, it's, I, I could have easily have done a, a tweet earlier uh, this morning or, or um, scheduled something, I think. Um, and that way we can maybe get some organic uh, eyeballs. Um, and going forward, we'll have live streams. So I know this is recorded um, and will be posted um, uh, retroactively, uh, but going forward, we'll have live streams. So um, whenever we go live, we can definitely tweet and hope people will retweet and, and comment yeah. and, and watch, right? So. Yeah. Any other suggestions, feedback on that front? No. Uh, anything else that we want to put on folks' radar that we're working on? Anything um, that we should have discussion about with about five minutes left? Did the, this is tangential, did the automation stuff, do we want that to be an RFC itself or do we want to just sort of implement that sort of thing? So if, is there, I guess there's an action item there to, to automate the um, agenda creation. Is that so? Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if, uh, yeah, if Rory's got that already. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you going to, uh, do you think you can own that, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That'd be awesome. Um, I don't think we need a RFC to be generated for that. Um, I, I think you can just do the, the work, um, whether it's a GitHub action or whatever it looks like to, to create essentially uh, an issue with, um, I, I think the scope of that is to create issue um, that's in the template or format of sort of the style that I've tried to keep to for the last few agendas and then uh, filling that out with the issues and PRs that were flagged. Um, uh, so whether uh, I think the hope originally was, or my hope originally was um, to at least have the agenda available about a week before, um, unfortunately with, with the holidays and, and other work, um, this got put together uh, pretty last minute this time. Um, although I was able to do it uh, at least a week before, and almost a month before with the first one um, for the last two meetings. So um, this had a little bit less ramp up time for sure. So maybe that's the, the cadence is about a week before the bi-weekly call, then the uh, automation would kick in and generate the agenda. And we can also like mutate that. It doesn't have to be sort of static. Yeah, and then whatever other like tweeting automation or stuff we can have can be kicked off after that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, well, if there's nothing else, no other feedback, we've got a couple of action items. I know Roy, I appreciate you taking notes. So we'll post those and share them in the, uh, uh, agenda thread and GitHub issues. Um, uh, yeah, thank you everybody for joining and we'll, uh, we'll catch you in a little bit. Bye. Bye.